ahead and begin uh, this uh, uh, forum tonight is about the AXO program uh, and what it's doing. And uh, especially to uh, we want to recognize those youth uh, that have participated and, and uh, have earned certain accolades and uh, achievements. And so that is a great thing. And we should always be lifting up our youth. And I won't go into this too much, but we know the media uh, has a tendency to focus on the negative things that our youth are doing. However, uh, we know the truth. Many of us know the truth that so many of our youth are doing positive things and there is not enough credit given to those youth and not enough attention. And so we're glad tonight to be able to give that uh, attention to this AXO program and to these youth. So with no further ado um, from, uh, from myself, uh, let me welcome those who are presenters tonight. Got to tell us more about uh, this program. Uh, let me welcome tonight, uh, Mr. James Gray. You, you here with us? Yes, I am. All right, brother. Uh, good to have you here tonight. Thank you so much. If you could just introduce yourself um, and uh, tell us uh, what your position is uh, with AXO. Well, well, first of all, I'm James Gray and I'm actually the uh, uh, counselor for the youth a division of the NAACP, uh, but the real uh, powerhouse is behind AXO are Miss Julia Battle and Miss Lynette Bates, who are both here. And other than to say, uh, this is a 40 some year old program that the NAACP has been involved in. Um, uh, I'm not gonna say anything else because whatever I say, uh, between Miss Battle and Miss Bates, they're gonna say it better than me. So I will turn it over to uh, Julia Battle to uh, lead the discussion as she sees fit. Miss Battle. Good evening, everyone. My name is Julia Battle, and Mr. Gray and I are co-chairs of NAACP AXO, as uh, is Miss Bates. We work hard together as a team. So I'm just gonna say that up front. And uh, were it not for Mr. Gray, we would not have this uh, AXO chapter here in New Orleans that is doing so well. And so uh, AXO began in 78. We were one of the charter chapters when it was begun by Vernon Jarrett. And uh, AXO has been active off and on since then. Um, usually uh, AXO sends maybe 10, children, three or four children to national. Uh, since we've been in existence for the past three years, the first year we sent 13 students gold medalists to national. And last year it was 15 students in 18 categories. And this year we will be sending 28 students to national. Now, we don't have our results to announce tonight. And uh, I apologize for that, but we promised our young people that the announcement would be on Wednesday at 5 p.m. So you all will be one of the first groups to get the results because we are just so delighted that you all are interested in AXO and want to help our youth. Um, AXO, uh, and, and I'm not gonna talk too long, I'll just give you some highlights. AXO is a competition that focuses on excellence in our youth high school students. Uh, it has become a mentorship program in the three years that we've developed. So we have mentors from all over the city and the different areas that we represent who come and work with the children or they work with them. They are uh, doctors, they are lawyers, they are teachers, they are musicians. They are city officials who come and spend time with our kids in the areas of their interest. And I'll just tell you real quick, the areas of competition. We have, um, we have art, visual art. We have performing arts. We have STEM. We have humanities. Um, we have, uh, instrumental music, vocal music, and uh, we also have architecture, entrepreneurship, culinary. So whatever your interest is, AXO has it, 
and we have uh, are developing the capacity to guide you in your field. And so that's where we go. So from our national, uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit about what happened on Saturday. Uh, we had 53 judges gather in those different areas and they came and volunteered their time to judge our students. We had over 206 students register with us to participate this year. 206 from 68 different schools in the city. Wow. Public, private, social, homeschool, and alternative schools. So everybody's welcome. Uh, we don't discriminate based on anything. You want to come, you come. And uh, we had uh, all of those judges. And I know we had well over 120 children. I haven't counted but I counted the ones that came in the categories that came. So we had quite a turnout on Saturday in every area. And for the first time this year, we have three students going to national in STEM. And you should see their science projects. They look like professional science projects. And that's thanks to one of our mentors and all of us working together to get them there. Um, so it was a very exciting day. It's nothing like being at that competition because they bring their art projects. They bring their talent. They're warming up in the hall with their dance and they're on stage with their instruments. Uh, it's just quite, quite, uh, quite a gathering. And then not to mention our volunteers and room monitors who help keep us on time. And the last thing I wanna tell you is that we had people from national there who come to see us every year to see how we do this in New Orleans. And they take our ideas back to the national level and try to help other AXO units to do as well. And for the first time this year, not only did we have a culinary gold medalist, we had one last year, but we had a hospitality team that is going to, uh, that is going to national for young men who put together a restaurant concept. So it was a very exciting day. So I'll pass on to Miss Bates, who well, fill in all the blanks that I left. Yeah, Miss Julia, just before you do that, first of all, thank you so much for coming tonight. And and you too, uh, Brother Gray, we appreciate it. Before we hear from Miss Lynette, just a couple of questions. Uh, where was the competition held this past Saturday? Yes, uh, Reverend Manning, we held our competition at University of New Orleans in the Performing Arts Center. Okay. And uh, they opened up the building to us, and uh, we were the main event at that building on Saturday. Wow, that, that is fantastic. And so the children come from in the city. Are there any that come outside of New Orleans as well? Yes, sir. They are from mainly from New Orleans, but we encompass the greater New Orleans area and Baton Rouge at this time. And so we don't turn any student away. If you can get to the competition, you're in the state of Louisiana and there's not a chapter with you, you can come. So we have spread our wings to include quite a few schools. Uh, East St. John High School was well represented and had over 40 students registered. And uh, so we had quite a few children from the, I guess, greater New Orleans, New Orleans and beyond. Wow, that is fantastic. And, and so I'm I'm just curious, um, these uh, presentations that they gave just sound so phenomenal. Would there be another opportunity uh, for people from the community to, to see what these students have put together? Absolutely. We have a award ceremony on June 1st. At the same uh, at the same uh, building, Performing Arts Center in the Recital Hall, and all gold, silver, and bronze medalists are invited to come and receive their awards. And a lot of times, there are citations from the city and the state from our elected officials there. And those students have an opportunity to perform for the community, and it's open to the public. All right, very good, very good. And remind me again, what age are these students? They are ninth through 12th graders. So okay. if you're in ninth grade, you can come. Now, some ninth graders are 13 or 15. And then some of our seniors may be a little older than 17 or 18, but they can come. 
And so we we invite them to come and they just, they turn up and they tell each other and the schools are enthusiastic. There are teachers in the schools who have taken the responsibility of making sure that the students signed up there get to the competition. We know some of our students have challenges like that at home and so forth. So we try to treat the whole child. Absolutely, that's, that's wonderful. And then one final question before we move to Miss Lynette. Um, tell us about the STEM project that 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 the students. I mean, not obviously we don't want to give away who won and get tell about yes. that. Yes, but, we can't reveal it just yet. <laughs> but we were represented in the engineering area in STEM. We were represented in the earth and space sciences. Um, we were represented in, and see, I'm not the STEM person, I'm the music person. Uh, <laughs> so sometimes it escapes me, but uh, those two areas, and there were some other areas as well. We had engineering. Lynette, help me because I'm I'm blanking out on, on them. Welcome, Miss Lynette. On, you're on mute. Oh, okay. You've covered it quite well, Julia. <laughs> Uh, but okay. there was a video. There was a video competition. Uh, someone entered in video. A, a, a number of people entered in uh, just art generally. I don't think you had any in photography, did you? We did not, but we had a filmmaker or two, which yeah. was just very exciting. And we had playwrights who came this time for the first time. And uh, their work was amazing. But I really would like to say those STEM areas, biology, chemistry, um, those areas where sometimes students will shy away. But these young people were not shy and they did not run away. And some of their presentations looked to be on the college level in terms of their design, their research, they're understanding the implications of their study and then the implication for further research. So we had quite a few students who entered. Uh, we had seven to present on Saturday in those STEM areas, medicine and health. Now it's coming to me. So quite a bit. Wow, that is that is absolutely phenomenal. So, so exciting. Um, Miss Lynette, would you uh, share with us uh, what you do and your your thoughts of, uh, about the program and just anything that you feel that we need to know. Okay. I, I think that one of the wonderful things in regards to AXO New Orleans is the fact that it is the community coming together to recognize the gifts and talents as well as the expertise of the young people in the areas of the arts and STEM. So as we foster the talents of the young people, they're given exposure they realize that they are indeed a part of the culture of the city of New Orleans, and it gives them greater self-esteem, which then moves them into the pathway to either develop those gifts and talents so that it may move on into their career option choices, or that they will either foster those interests so that it may be something that they provide to the community itself as they move into their various career areas. Um, I don't know whether or not we had the opportunity to show to you guys the national recognition that was given to AXO last year when we traveled to the national conference last year. Have you guys seen that film? I don't believe it. About they a two minute video? No, yeah, we might have another one. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, our administrator, uh, Kiana, can you uh, uh, make Lynette the uh, co-host so she can share it when she gets through speaking, please? We have oh, we have enough of time for you to share it. Thank you. Oh, okay, great. And and so the video, um, there's a thought that action speaks louder than words. So the video <laughs> is action, yes. and it will speak much louder than any words that um, Mr. Gray, Dr. Battle, or myself might present to you, because you would actually see the young people in action as they so eloquently and beautifully represented the city of New Orleans. So. We will be happy to share that video at this time, and hopefully the technology will work. Looks like we're getting there. Right. Okay. Fingers crossed. Okay. Come on. To the stage. Oh, did I move to the next video? No, you're there. Okay. 
can't you, go no. do this oh, to well, clear out stock poop something path. we don't want to look at on june 17th in 2019 uh, my mom was okay rushed hold up. on guys no commercial hey please reimagine i know <laughs> okay it, it actually moved to the next video You'll give me um, two minutes if someone else could actually share. Okay, I'm gonna that... stop sharing to set up the video again. All right. Well, while she's setting up the video, uh, I, I would just say you. First of all, I want to notice um, Mr. Bell or one of our members is is here. I don't know if he's one of your members too or if he's here. He, he, he is. Uh, yeah. Well, well, he also, <clears throat> of course, is with the NAACP and. Um, uh, aside from the professionals that we had working with the kids, we had people like Mr. Bell and myself who just came to help out to make things run uh, well Saturday. Uh, we could use the help, whether you were a PhD like uh, Ms. Bell is, or whether you were just somebody like Mr. Bell and I who were willing to work and do what we were told to do. Uh, but what the video is going to show you is, and maybe I, I She's going to get the video. I don't want to say it. But but I will say our kids are as good as anyone in this country. And we don't know that sometimes. Uh, one of the biggest problems we have is... Your face on that? No. Miss... Okay. One of the biggest problems we have is that we think there are some folks out there better than us and better than our kids. And therefore, we don't encourage our kids... To, to go and compete. Um, the truth is the, the pub and, and including the public school kids in the Orleans Parish are as good as any kids in the United States of America. Uh, we've demonstrated that with what these kids have done with AXO and we need to go back and encourage more of them to do more things because they are capable, they are great. Uh, Miss uh, Lynette, are you close? Uh, Pastor Manning, we have uh, yeah. the president, uh, uh, Ronna Coleman. Mr. Ronna Coleman, join us of uh, the NAACP. You going to give him time to speak? Yeah, absolutely. While um, um, we get this video together, I'm sure it won't be long. But let, uh, let's uh, welcome uh, Brother Ronald Coleman. Good to see you tonight. Good to see you. And congratulations on your victory to serve this community. And I look forward to you, uh, Pastor Manning, your vision for how to make New Orleans better. And uh, hopefully you'll run for school board. Yes, I am campaigning for you to run for school board. Uh, you understand the nature of this community, and I am encouraged you to run, and I'm not ashamed to say it. So anyway, I am honored to be here with Mr. Gray and the, and the group. They're doing a great job with Dr. Bates, uh, all of them. They're doing Ms. Battle. They're doing great work. But then, as Mr. Gray said, it's our children, and we have come to the point to think our children are not worth anything. Because they hear it all the time in the schools. We the hardest problem we have is getting the schools to buy into acts or to send the children. Because they don't Why? believe they can do it. And that's Why? been one of the biggest challenges we have had. Mr. Greg can share that with you. And so, but we're gonna keep working and keep driving at this. Uh, but brother Ronald, why do you think it is such a uh, such a difficulty getting the schools uh to engage with AXO? Well, the difficulty is first off, we don't have real school teachers in New Orleans. This is an experiment. 2005 right. September's experiment, you have folks that's not real educated. You have folks that have degrees in horticulture, they have degree in planning, but it's a, it's a serious task to be a teacher because you are a nurturer. And that's why there's training for teaching. You, anybody can't be, I just can't be a preacher because I say I want to be a preacher. First, I have to have the calling from the big man and then I have to sit in the class to identify what's going on. So that's what's going on with our schools. They're not real schools. They're there, it's about money. Remember, $680 million when they started, and it's more than that now, they collect from property tax from the renters of New Orleans, or the property owners. So at the end of the day, it's a money grab. It's not about yeah. educating. Absolutely, absolutely. That, and as um, and we, you, you know as well, as well as I do, we need to do something about it. And, 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 and uh, Brother Ronald, as, as you mentioned, um, OPDEC and, and, and my election to that, I, I was just thinking, how do we engage these, you know, because we got to begin to connect the dots. Every, all of this is overlapping and, and, and needs to from the, from the, from the school system that, and the charter school system to, you know, getting, getting uh, direct run schools like the Leah Chase school that's coming online and 
in the fall and and how we need to educate our children about the importance of going out to vote. And that needs to start even within programs such as these. I don't know how uh, you all feel about that. Well, Pastor Manning, as I said during our, this is our runoff, you have members right there in your church was passing your vision on. It was on the ground the day of the election, prior to the election, registering to vote, educating. One of the things happened, and I'm glad you're in OBDEC because OBDEC supported some of the same members that took the school board down. Without mm -hmm. any questions that they support them. We have Ethan Ashley. We had Olin Parker, Carla Zervin. These people are elected to OBDEC. They were there when they should not, and, and they didn't do anything to better the situation. They gave up their power. And that's why we are strongly encouraging we need a new school board, and I still say you one of those people I'm looking forward to you putting your hat in the ring outside of the NAACP as Ronald Coleman, a chronic voter. I'm supporting you and I'm encouraging everybody I know. I'm asking because we do need a change on the school board. It's for tomorrow. And you're one of the people for this district. And I've been going around the city. We got to replace that board. It's very critical and get their power back. All right. Thank you, uh, Brother Thank Ronald. you. I see we have the video already. It looks no. like Ms. Lynette needs to be allowed to get in. Okay. Uh, uh, Kiana, could you share I the just let, I let her in. Okay. Thank you, bro. Okay. Um, this here is a video that I have. I'm going to share it while Lynette get herself. This is from 2022 at uh, UNO. <laughs> I don't, well, we don't hear the sound, at least I don't. Is there sound going? Yeah. No, that's not on. It's not on? The well, sound. Come on well, come on, Lynette, work on yours. Do yours while I work on mine. This is where we need the young people <laughs> to do some work on technology for us. Uh, yes. Here's, so so um, let me swing back uh, to our guest tonight. Um, as Ronald mentioned, one of the challenges is getting the schools uh, to engage. Um, and, and what I'm interested in as well is how do we overcome, what are some challenges that we can help uh, you all overcome? Obviously spreading the word, uh, what other ways can we assist and support AXO in the community as, as members of faith-based institutions, as um, members of different uh, social uh, institutions. How can, and we all know children too, as well too, and children in our community, how can we support uh, Axel and taking it to, to the next well, level? Well, let, let, let me suggest a couple of things. First of all, just in terms of, you know, what the problem is, we hear so much negative stuff about our children, we believe it. Right. First of all, as bad as the schools are, as bad as everything is, there are many, many great kids at the public schools in Arlene's Parish. We need to, first of all, be aware of that. Uh, we, I'm aware of a kid who did everything he needed to do to get into Harvard uh, University. I'm not saying that's the best place to go, but the teachers at the school and his parents talked him out of going saying, despite the fact Harvard thought you were good enough, we don't think you're good enough to go there and make it, do something else. Wow. And and maybe it's a good reason not to go there, but not because you don't think you can make it. Mm -hmm. Our kids need to know they can go anywhere and make it any place. And that's our job. That's our job in the church is we complain about the schools and maybe we should complain about them. We leave the impression that because they're bad, you can't read. Well, you can read in a bad school. I mean, I'm not saying we don't want to have good schools, but I'm saying that we have kids can do everything we ask them to do, and we just don't ask them to do anything. Now, mm, very I good think point. that is the most important thing because maybe you can change the school system. Maybe you can change a lot of things, but each of us can change the children at home, in our families, in our church, in our neighborhoods. And, and, and while we're changing the world, we need to make that change uh, at the very local level. I believe. Um, if if Miss Lynette is ready, you ready, Lynette? Let's see. We have okay. We got the screen sharing rights. Thank you. I'd like to apologize for the error that took place earlier. To the stage. 
NAACP President and CEO, Derek Johnson. Maybe it's me, but there's nothing up here. It's still quite frozen. So please give yourself a hand. And a special shout out to the New Orleans. I will share the link. I'll stop sharing and I'll simply put the link in to everyone. So they have 31 <laughs> reference uh, categories. The level Sometimes things have difficulty. So any other your video is still going. You, it, to, going you your, know, your... guys, it might, Miss Bates, I don't know whether this will help or not, but if you turn off, I no, mean, well, no, I don't think, I guess you can't do that, though, if you turn off your screen. I actually uh, um, sent it to the host for the host to share as well. Okay. Donna, would oh, you yeah, that should work. Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Is Kiana the host? It's it's probably one of those um, intermittent Cox shorties right. in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all know Cox and how that works. Yeah. <laughs> but I can see the video at this point. I'm not sure who's sharing. Um, the host, Justice and Beyond. Okay. Is it working? Well, I saw it, but then <laughs> now it, it went away. Had to click exit. It says click to exit full screen. I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, I saw it. The bad. Well, there it, there it goes. goes. There, it goes. there uh, we yep. go. Yeah. Right. And that's it. Now we have a sound issue. Give yourself a hand. Yay. Special shout out to the New Orleans actual participants because they had 31 reference uh, categories in the local competitions and more actual kids than any other area. New Orleans Axel had been inactive since about 2016. In 2019, it stopped altogether. Councilman James Bray and I called and he said he'd like to start up the Axel chapter in 2022. So that's how we got started this year. We started again in the fall. We upped our game a little and we were able to get over 150 applicants this year. So we felt like that was really inclusive, which is really what NAACP is all about. Hi, my name is Samara Victoria, and I'm 17 years old. I'm from the New Orleans chapter, and I competed in traditional dance. A turning point would probably be the process of being here because I had to work with different people that, you know, I've never met before and try different styles. But I believe that New Orleans, we, New Orleans is close. I don't even know how to put it into words. One thing about New Orleans, we got flavor. We're not a tossed salad, we're a melted butter. And when you're in a city that's so vibrant, you're around people who love to do what they love to do, love to express themselves, a, a cultural earth, it just bleeds into you. It's like, reach out to one another. If you're a dancer, reach out to other dancers. Reach out to business students. Reach out to culinary students. Because we all have something we can offer to each other. New Orleans flows because we are diverse. We are inclusive. We are immensely talented. And we have a spirit of togetherness. So what you guys just witnessed is what yeah, we idiot. teach the students in that we, within the last 10 minutes or so, experienced technology challenges. We knew what we wanted to do. We knew what the goal was, but then challenges were met as we attempted to fulfill the goals. Now, we could have decided that we would just simply give up or we would be embarrassed by what took place. Instead, we reached into our hearts for a spirit of resiliency and a spirit of unity and a spirit of acceptance. And you guys patiently waited for the truth to come forward. And the truth was displayed in the wonderful voices of our youth, because we listen to the youth. They're wow. talented, they're brilliant, they're resilient, 
they're faithful, and they are the city of New Orleans. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like we just need to take a breath for a moment and just recognize those exception, exceptional, incredible, phenomenal young people on that video and you all's work. Uh, to make this happen. That was incredible. I, I know clapping kind of just messes up the audio sometimes, but I just want to just clap and say, well done. And and to those youth and to, uh, to, to that, it just, it really just gives me a, uh, just a wonderful feeling of, of pride and joy in our youth and, and just feel like that this should just be promoted even more. It should be on the radio. It should be on television. And, and you know, we know our media and how they do and, and that it, 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 it profits them in some way not to show things like this, but it should be. So just, I am just so blessed that, that we waited. It was worth the wait. <laughs> it would, if it would have taken an hour to get that up, it still would have been worth the wait. So um, my, 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 so thank you. Thank you so much for, for getting, allowing us to, to see that tonight. Um, anything, what, what else you all want to share? Anything else that we need to know about sponsorships, about, uh, how do we get young people signed up? Is it only through the school? Uh, do we have to get a, a registration packet? What, when's the enrollment date? What, what do we else we need to know? Pastor Manny, <laughs> Pastor Manny, I'm sorry. Can I interrupt right quick? I wanted yeah. to reach out to ask um, Mr. Ron Coleman, because he, when I invited him again this evening, that he was also mentoring the youths at the Youth Study Center. So can he speak on that venture before we go into the other one? Well, yeah, no, no. These are just questions I was asking everybody. So if okay. they had it. Okay. So, right. Um, so, uh, Brother Ronald, though, um, you are doing some work at the Youth Study Program? It's, well, I go in. I go in once or twice a week, and I, uh, today I I go on Mondays. And there's two young men that I speak with, and we talk about advancing themselves out of the predicament they're in. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a very easy task. And we talk about where they are, how they got there, and and the bottom line, not only just to them, but across the country, the different jails that I go into, it says the same thing. If I woulda, shoulda, coulda. Right. That is the thing. So I was looking at on Thursday of, of Holy Thursday. The Archbishop came to the jail and he was watching the feed. He had a sermon about you are out of the eyesight of the people, but you're not out of the hearts of us, people that believe in Jesus. And just as I walked out, they had two little boys calling up to the window to their daddy to come home. This was and normally the guard that patrols outside. We all froze just to listen at those children. Daddy, we need you home. We're doing our homework. When you coming? But Easy said, No, I'm not coming. So I was looking to put together a public service piece that says, Think before you do, whatever mm -hmm. it is, just think about it. So I ran into a mother, a son breed dogs and the dogs had a litter last week and he had to talk over the phone to the dog to calm the dogs down while he's in jail. So not only, you know, it's, it's a broad picture of what happens when we are incarcerated by making bad decisions. And so I was gonna look around, I think I talked to Ms. Val about it as well. We need to have a campaign because you can't talk about the conditions of incarceration because it'll get you in a lot of trouble. But for the overall piece, it says, think before you do. Just give it a just give it a thought before you do. And you just put the children, their family, the animals, and all the things that miss you in their life because you made a bad decision, you could have easily walked away. So hopefully with some prayer and constant that we can get this campaign out for our young folks as well. We got their brothers 13 and 14 years old. They'll never go to the prime. They won't ride a bike. They won't do all the things that we take for granted every day, like climbing a tree and running to the park because they charge a second degree murder. And I offer them hope through conversation by saying, we know you're here, you're here, and we're going to make the best of it. We can educate ourselves and pass with your knowledge on to be instructor because we do have some instructors throughout the prison system. I know it's not a bright future to look to, but it's a reality. So I would like to incorporate all of us, just help us get this message out. It's just a one word thing. Just, just think before you do if something else we can put with it and get that message out. When you do those things, what happens to the loved ones and even to your pets? So that's what we have, Pastor. Absolutely. Think, Thank you for saying that. I think listening to the discussion, two, um, two quotes come to mind. One is that a journey begins with a single step. And to quote Barack Obama, we are the ones we have been looking for. 
And so this is the deal as far as I'm concerned. For every negative teacher or parent or kiddo or any of those things, I mean, yes, they're all around everywhere. They're not just in New Orleans. I mean, systems, systems are systems and they don't always work because they're not inclusive or well-organized. But each one of us has to dig and find a way to reach those people. Now, I will tell you, there was a discussion we just had about the schools. And at, at five schools this year, and it took three years, I had teachers who were responsible for gathering children who wanted to do this audition. And Reverend Manning, you asked about how do they do it. We have a website and our kids are tech savvy and we put out announcements uh, in the agenda. We have an email chain. We add you to our email if you would like to be a part of that. And so when those come out at your churches, at wherever you are, make sure folks get that literature and make sure you say to them, it's for everybody. You don't have to be a uh, professional yet. You just need to try. They have mentors because mm. we even have mentors from Grambling and Xavier to try to make them uh, more accessible to the young people and not just old gray haired people helping them. So that's the way I look at it. And I know all of us sitting here can see that. So we know what's there, not right in the schools, but you have to, I make phone calls. Mm -hmm. I made friends with secretaries. I mm -hmm. made friends with band directors, choir directors, art teachers, STEM teachers. And there are people within that system that will connect with you and help the students to connect. And uh, so that's really what happens. And the website I can type or Miss Lynette can type into the chat and uh, you can uh, go to that and you can see all the areas to compete in. There's a student application form right there. So there's no paper that has to be had. And you can type, those kids can type their information right in there with the help perhaps of an adult to, to make sure they're getting there. But when I got two, I really got 225 applications online this year. And before we started, you know, about 20 people kind of, there was attrition. They couldn't do it or it was a conflict, but we kept 206 children registered right up until the time of competition. And it was because of those teachers in that classroom or in those organizations that said, Dr. Battle, here, I have five kids. Are they incur and the parents, guys? The parents, they come and they're wonderful and they talk to you and they say, Oh, we want our kids to do this and this. What do we have to do, Dr. Battle? Mm -hmm. And so they are there. So the journey begins with us, and I'm going to stop talking. And it be we are the people that have to change it because yes. they, whoever they are, are not yes. going to do it for us. Absolutely. We got to stop depending, waiting on them to do it. And we have to take on that responsibility. And, and part of the responsibility, too, uh, is that we forget and, and uh, or don't acknowledge that a lot of our children so often suffer from low self-esteem and, and yeah. just don't believe in themselves, don't believe they have it in them. Mm -hmm. And that and, and what the gift that they have will never be pulled out of them if we don't let them know you you are great you have greatness in you and you can do this and teach them how to hold their head up and, and believe yeah. that they've been given a special gift we have to we we spend too much time condemning our children take on a child and just tell them you look beautiful today That's you look right. so bright so smart you are you know, from age of two when they as young as they can understand you even if they can't understand you start start telling them you are so intelligent Absolutely. uh you so much potential. So, Rev, 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 Rev Man and um, I have two granddaughters. Uh, one I call Morgan the Great, and the other one I call the Mighty Mariah. <laughs> Every conversation with Morgan the Great and the Mighty Mariah, I tell them how pretty they are and how smart they are. Every time, and and I've done this since before they were born. I talked to their mama's stomach when they were babies in the womb. 
I, I think the most important thing is we let our kids know we love them. Some of them are living in tough situations. Yes. We help out where we can. But even in tough situations, kids can do great things. We had some kids. Uh, I took forms to a little girl who was in a home. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and she participated. Mm. And she's mm -hmm. locked up. I had to go ring the doorbell and let the whoever the monitors were come, first of all, search me to make sure I wouldn't bring contraband into the place. Right, right. But, and but, she sent us a virtual audition and did beautifully. Go ahead, well, Mr. Gray. But all I'm <laughs> saying is, but it takes everyone. Public speaking is one of the categories. Every church ought to be sending us some public speakers. Mm -hmm. Every single church ought to be sending us some public speakers. And when you send us some, you need to get all your friends to send some. Mm -hmm. We had 200 kids. We should have had 500. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We should have had 500. Absolutely. And we could have 500 easily if if the people on this call all said, I'm going to get involved. Now, we do have other one other little problem. We promise every one of these kids we're going to give them a ticket to Las Vegas. We're going to give them a hotel room in a five-star hotel for five days, and we're going to give them food to eat. Not food to eat. We'll give them money to buy food for five days, <laughs> which means we need a little money, yeah. which we do not have at this moment. But we're going to get it. Yeah. Someone here is going to help. The NAACP uh, did a lot last year. But last year, we weren't dealing with 28 kids like we're dealing this year. Mm -hmm. So it's a bigger task. But this, we're going to do this and it can grow. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. The public speakers, your church needs to send us some public speakers for next year. Yes. All right. You need to tell all the other preachers in your association that your yeah. church is going to send more to their church. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, Pastor Man, I want to say um, uh, Miss Bates had her hand up. Miss who? Uh, oh, Ms. he knows me as Lynette. He doesn't know. Oh, okay. okay. Listen, Miss Lynette. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Lynette. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Miss Lynette. Okay. I, I simply wanted to say that as we begin our journey for the next year, I'll be happy to remind the organization as well as you, um, Reverend Manny, particularly in the other circles that you and I have in common in terms of Together New Orleans, which has a rich history of churches as well as other community organizations. Yes, so I, I, I was just going to say that I'd appreciate that because not only does Justice and Beyond keep need, needs to keep bringing this around to keep this at the forefront of people's minds uh, so that we can participate and support and promote uh, as best our best ability, but so many other organizations need to do the same. So, uh, we need to have <laughs> AXO t-shirts or cards or whatever and say, hey, get your child involved in this. And y'all just reminded me, you know, I, I had a grandmother who brings grandchildren to church on Sunday. And, and you know, we all have a responsibility. We all can do something and, and, and can even do a little bit more than what we're doing. And she said to me, she said, oh, Rondell said to me that he's fit in fifth grade. She said, he said to me, I love pastor and I want to be just like pastor when I get older. And I said, man, I need to do more <laughs> to really help that young man achieve and become what he wants to be. And so uh, uh, so that really just impressed upon me that you, you never know how these young people are looking at you and, 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 and man or woman, wh whoever we, we all can be mentors in some way, because they, as we all know, they're ob uh, observant and uh, uh, absorbent. Uh, and so uh, we need to take, take responsibility for that and do the best we can. Okay. Hey, now we have any questions, uh, concerns. Silver, you see any in the chat? No, not yet. But um, okay. Miss Betty just put her hand up before I started opening my mouth up. Me too. I, I have one too. Okay, Look, come on, Betty. Miss Betty, can I go first, Miss Betty? Since I was before, of just course, about to speak. Sylvia, okay. go right ahead. Well, um, I just wanted to say I'm so I'm so impressed uh, with the presentation this evening because we need this more and more, and we here at Justice and Beyond. Thank you, Pastor Manny. Because you're an awesome leader, a very awesome leader. And just to know the condition 
that you have, it makes all of us work hard and harder. So only thing I'm saying is whatever we need to do, as Pastor Manning said, because I'm so familiar with Mr. Gray, especially Miss Edith Jones. <laughs> and I'm surprised she was not on the call. And I will call her because I worked for her at Urban League. And when I say the the after school program they had uptown on Britannia that was moved in the Bryman College building. Sylvia was the one who cleaned that building and got it ready for the street academy. But that woman is awesome too, Pastor Manny. So I just want to put out whatever we can do to help for his t-shirts, cards. Please let us know. We are there for each other. It's time to step up and stop talking. So all, all right. Thank, Thank you. you, Sylvia. Thank you so much. Thank all right, um, Betty. Hey, good afternoon, y'all. I'm Betty DeMarco. Um, I am so appreciative of Val bringing all of you to this discussion tonight because um, I can't tell you how much we I feel that we have just done an injustice to our youth and to our black residents of this city. Um, I happened to go, I'm on the board of Abutu Village NOLA and I called Ernest and said, get on the call because you need to be hearing what's going on. This we this weekend, uh, Ernest, I'll quickly say this, Ernest is involved in the uh, violence prevention work with the health department. And this weekend, he also had about 15 youth that were in a theatrical production. We all have, and I wanted him to talk more about his work and I hope he gets on the call because we have to start working together for the kids. He, it's he's just, on the call. Yeah, it's just not going to work if we just keep acting like everything's okay. It isn't. The children are, they're begging for help. And that's why we see what's going on. They need our love and our appreciation. So I can't tell you how impressed I am with the work that all of you are doing. And I hope you will, one of you will get in touch with me or Val to put you in touch with Ernest Johnson because there is some money in the city right now to work with youth. And maybe part of that, we can help you guys get young people to Las Vegas uh, when you need to. So anyway, that's what I wanted to say. And I hope Ernest gets on the call before we finish this discussion because I'm, I'm very impressed. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I see Ernest. I see my big brother, Ernest Johnson. I'm going to yield to my big brother, Ernest Johnson. Come on and talk to us, Ernest. Good evening, everyone. So Betty gave me a call and told me that a number of people who was on the call was talking about specifically service for you. And I won't go into everything that we're doing, but in particular around the gun violence and the intervention program that we're doing, we're looking for a collective process. And so if you are serving some youth or, you know, you just, you know, in the community that we're in, I would just like the um extend an invitation, in particular from the NAACP, is that how we can be supportive and how collective that we can um, have this one voice around, you know, and we know all the isms and all the stuff that is created, to, you know, that is targeted towards our youth, but how can we come together as a unified, you know, group and how can we get the support from the NAACP and any other organization that's on this call and get the same thing and, and we can do the same thing in return because as Betty has indicated, <clears throat> we're working with the city and the hospital, but we understand that this are institutions, right? And too often when we talk about working with institutions, you know, we get the service that we need there and they're not doing a bad job, but when it comes, there's a large gap between the community and those institutions that are, you know, fully resourced to do the work that they are doing. So how do we translate that and how do we support that and get that to the community we serve? And so uh, I just would like to connect. I know Val, we exchanged some texts this weekend about, you know, talking to the NAACP more 
with all due respect, that will be a privilege to have an opportunity to talk with them and how we can get the support from them and advice versus we can support the work that everyone else is doing. I will, that's good. I will share, uh, 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 Ernest, I will share your your uh, contact, embedded contact with the uh, EXO uh, uh, co-chairs, well, all three of them, uh, Ms. Bakes, Ms. Dr. Battle, and uh, Mr. Gray. So I will send that you know, information to you all Thank about you, them. So yes, and also it's my turn now. Thank you, big brother Ernest. And thank you, Sister Betty, for uh, see they go right there. They go to the link. Um, um, Ernest put his information. Ernest put his email in. Uh, good, thank you, thank you, Ernest. See, that's why I call him Big Brother, and Big Butter, and Big Sister Betty. See, they take care of us, right? So anyway, I want to I want to brag about the AXO because of the ATU International Black Caucus had a chance to work with AXO for our Black History Month. We celebrate Black History in February at the Historical Church, um, St. Uh, St. James, saying, help me out, Ronald. I want to say this. Oh, St. James. Okay, thank you. So anyway, um, we had a excellent time. We was It was in person. The AXO youth came and performed. They did a ballet. They did uh, a solo. They played the horn. Um, we had a young lady who did an African theme, uh, uh, anthem. I mean, they are really good. They are really good. Um, Miss uh, Bakes uh, introduced because I didn't want to mess up the name, right? So I had to reach out to Miss Bakes. Miss Bakes, she did an excellent job, but they are really good. And when we see the kids in person, the children, the youth, the young adults in person, they will feel our presence. They will feel your energy. And I just urge everyone to encourage and get involved with the youth because when they see that we care about, they're going to do more. When they see that we spend time, they're going to spend time. When they see that we spend up the money, they're going to spend up the money. They're going to spend time and they're going to respect us. So I will encourage everyone. And I have $5. I'm willing to give you all $4.50. Ain't no if and buts about that. So if we do, we have, I just want to just give y'all a shout out publicly and, and I already did that privately that we really appreciate appreciate um, you all working with the youth, uh, bringing the EXO out in New Orleans. Uh, I want to turn this back over to uh, Pastor Manny. Thank you, Valerie, mm -hmm. so much. Um, let me uh, just uh, see if there are any more questions from any of our participants tonight. Uh, any more questions about how you can get involved? Any questions about how you can support financially or otherwise? Uh, any connections that that you want to make in terms of of networking and and uh, um, you know giving out contacts or suggestions? To anybody? I do have one question. I want to ask the participants that, that our guest because the, do y'all have like an outreach um, outreach program or outreach? Um, a uh, uh, department or outreach person to go out and speak to the churches, speak to the organizations, speak to the schools about EXO or about the youth in NAACP or just about uh, doing something productive like your mentorship. Do y'all, can y'all speak on that about the mentorship? The wonderful and mighty Edith Jones has taken on that responsibility in regards to speaking to the various organizations that are within the um, city limits for the most part. And as she goes out to not only share the great works of AXO, she oftentimes will invite those of us who might be available to join her at that time. In addition to the fact that as she does speak to the various organizations, she does ask that they put their money where their mouth is. So for those of you who are here, we know that we can look forward to your looking for our um, GoFundMe page, which we'll provide to you in the future. And as you see the email, which Dr. Battlesell religiously puts out on a regular basis throughout the week, the months, the days, and et cetera, she's constantly sharing updates regarding our students who are participating, our mentors, as well as other supporters. You'll have the opportunity to share those pages with your friends. 
All right. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so that we can get a better understanding too, as you mentioned, uh, the GoFundMe page and and the goal to get all 28 of these uh, students to uh, Las Vegas, what is the financial cost per child uh, to support them? And in, in, if you know that breakdown and supporting and getting them to Las Vegas. I see James Gray leaning forward. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, Mr. I'm, Gray. I'm leaning yeah. forward. And, and let, let me say this. Uh, one of the little houses we have is that the NAACP has not told us the hotel yet. Uh, but they're going to tell us the hotel and the price. What we have done in the past is we gave every kid a hotel room. And you may say, why does every kid need an individual room? Well, the first year we had COVID. And we really had medical reasons for having them separate. But also what that did, we had many families that could not afford to go. But by giving the kid the room, we didn't help families get there. But if they got there, they were able to stay with their child. Uh, so, so far, we've given every kid a room. We don't know the exact price, but last year that cost us over $230 a kid a night for five nights. That's over $1,000. Round trip airfare, uh, that was $600 or so, or $700. And we have given food. Uh, so far, we've been giving the kids food allowance at uh, the government rate which was $65 a day, so five times 65 per kid, because we go on five days, that's $325. That's all the what it cost us per kid, and that gets past $2,000 per kid. Now, that's expensive, that's hard. Uh, if I was doing it, we'd go cheaper, but Ms. Battle is first class, and. For example, I wanted the kids to get there early that morning and go compete that afternoon. Ms. Bella said the artists had to get there the yeah. night before, yeah. sleep, and get up the next morning, yeah. which meant another night in the hotel. Yeah. I wanted them to compete the last night and go get on the plane. You know, it, it, some people might say we could have saved money, but that's what it cost us last year, for example. Uh, we don't know where that airfare is yet, but as soon as the national give us the details, we're going to get the airfare. But it's going to be six, seven hundred dollars a kid round trip. We don't know where the hotel is yet, but it's going to be close to a thousand dollars a kid. We know the food is going to be about three hundred dollars a kid for five days. Um, that's what we've spent in the past. We were able to do it last year. We had fewer kids. Are we going to be able to do it this year? I don't know. That's what we're trying to do. We we believe by faith you are. Yes, I said the same thing, Pastor yes. Manning. We have faith. Yeah. <laughs> Forsaking God. all, we trust in him. Thank you. And and, and let me also let, let me also add um the kid who I thought was the best and I can't say the best because we had so many great kids. It's crazy to say who's the best. But we had a little kid from Carver who was Superman, greatest singer, a little kid, one of Miss Bates' kids uh, uh, through her uh, Upward Bound program. And uh, actually, he didn't win at Nationals, but he has a scholarship to college somewhere in Illinois. And Miss Bates, where is he? I believe it's Westland, if I'm not mistaken. Illinois Westland. Mm -hmm. At Yale. Now, uh, we have a kid who got into one of the national culinary institutes in San Antonio, Texas. We have a kid who just got admitted to the Berkeley School of Music in Massachusetts. I never heard of it because I'm not a music man, but Miss Bates and Miss Ballas say that's the best music they school good. in the country. They good. Mm -hmm. We're doing good stuff. The kids, well, not we, the kids are doing great stuff. Just need to give them a chance. Absolutely. Reminding me, guys, of one other component that we added as of last year. As we travel to the national conference, we are including, as of last year, college tour opportunities for the students. So that's an added component so that the students are exposed to colleges and universities outside of the greater New Orleans area. Okay. And, and last year, the conference was in Boston. We went to Harvard and we had a little student guide. Uh, 
who said her mama was a maid and her daddy was a yard man or something, and she was at Harvard. She said, you could be here too. Mm. Powerful, powerful. Uh, just work at it. Yeah. yeah. And just one last thing to add, that culinary scholarship was awfully impressive. It's the Culinary Institute of America. And the young man had also gotten a scholarship previously to the San Antonio branch to do the associate's degree. But now, because he won gold at National, he has a full ride to that Culinary Institute of America in New York. So he will transfer there in the fall to finish his culinary training and a, a business degree. So he gets the whole package. And it came to about $260,000. Wow. Him. So okay. lots That's of amazing. opportunities. Absolutely. Can I add? Can I add something that I feel excited about as y'all talking about these wonderful kids? Mm -hmm. Well, my grandson, he's 15. He'll be 16 in August. He was invited by a college in Alabama. He was one of the lead quarterbacks for his school in, in Georgia, Marietta, Georgia. So with the spring on, Lenard, it was a 5.0 you had to score. He was still able to score 3.5 because he still played. And my daughter's husband is a neurologist in Atlanta. <laughs> and Lenard is encouraged to be a medicine doctor for the football team as well. And he promised to buy his Nana a Bugatti. So I'm holding him to that. So it's <laughs> very encouraging that we play a major role in these children's lives. So I just wanted to add that because I'm a proud grandma, Mr. Gray. <laughs> you, you, you ought to be. And I wanted to talk about one other little kid going to Spain next year. One of our kids, uh, Ms. Ballard, you can tell us a little bit more about the kid going to Spain. Well, it's affiliated with the Berkeley School of Music. Uh, they have simply embraced our students in New Orleans, uh, the way I look at it. And uh, it's great because it's a school that embraces our uh our jazz culture as well. But uh, the student, the freshmen this year who were admitted to Berkeley are also being allowed and uh, actually being sent to Spain to study music in Spain for a year. And they're connected with a conservatory there in Spain that uh, is top notch international reputation. So they're gonna have a cultural experience as well their freshman year. So it's a bonus. That is that is exciting. Um, thank you all so much. Um, uh, let me just have some some closing remarks from any of our presenters tonight. Um, if, uh, if if let me just give you a chance, kind of to leave us with some some closing words. Uh, let me start with you, um, 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 Miss Julia. If you would please give us some closing words. Well, I just want to say I'm grateful for you all giving us the time to come and speak with you this evening. And I hope this is a, the beginning of a long and fruitful partnership in terms of reaching out to children and encouraging them to join and work with us. And we will take as many as you bring us, and then we'll ask that you help with donations so that we can service them. And I just thank you all. It's been a wonderful spirit here tonight. Bless you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here. And thanks for all the wonderful work that you're doing. Um, uh, Brother Ronald Coleman, are you still here? Yes, still here. And the only thing I can say, I want to thank all of y'all, and especially to my AXO team. I'm going to just tell you all a little short story. When I got elected president, I asked Mr. Gray, would he help me serve? He said, man, I don't want to talk about it. I went home, took me a shower, got in my prayer corner. He called me. And I can't say thank you enough to children's lives. I know Mr. Gray, what he did in the Rosenwald area. And I asked God to help him to help me to fulfill a mission of the NACP and our children. And it's a blessing. I want to thank you, Mr. Gray, to you and the whole team. So that's how I got him here. And I remind him all the time. I ask you, but I'm going to the big man. And that's who got me here. And once again, it's a blessing in disguise with the whole team for AXO. And uh, we're going to keep it working. We're going to continue to work and support. And thank you all again. All right. Thank you, uh, Brother Ronald. Uh, Brother Gray, would you say some few uh, closing words? Well, it's all easy if you have the team. And uh, I say have the team. Uh, I feel like I got drafted to coach the uh, uh, the greatest team in the world. Uh, 
uh, Ms. Ballow with her PhD in music, knowing all these people who she can get involved. Ms. Bates with her relationship uh, at uh, UNO uh, has been a lifesaver. Ms. Jones, the one time head of the Urban League. All of those folks have gotten together and uh, Ms. Uh, Ballow started off by saying, we used to send six or seven kids. What she meant was, I think the most the state of Louisiana ever sent was six to the Nationals. New Orleans would do maybe one or two. We sent in 28 this year. So, and, and we go, well, it's only 32 categories. So the most you can send is 32. And we sent in 28 this year. Phenomenal. Yes. That's good. That's good. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brother Gray. We appreciate that. And Miss Lynette, last but not least, would you please uh, give us some closing remarks? Awesome. Thank you guys so very much for having us here today. It's an honor to be in your presence. And my the final thoughts will be taken from Philippians chapter four, verse eight, which reads, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Axel is excellent and worthy of praise. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank, you so much. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. And this gives us indeed something lovely and uh, worthy of praise to talk about uh, when, when, when you're talking about wonderful things going on in the city. Uh, I want to encourage everybody that hears this now tonight and will hear this later on Facebook or, or our YouTube channel to talk about the work of AXO. Uh, and 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 the tremendous um, uh, accomplishments of these young people, and the the opportunity that many other young people have, and the ability that's that we know is in them, uh, and that we're not going to no longer talk about uh, the negative, but we're going to promote just the positive things that are going on. So when you do that, promote Axel. So, uh, thank you all so much for being here. Really appreciate. Uh, the efforts that you guys are doing, the wonderful work, and we lift up these young people and uh, just uh, ask God to continue to, to protect and watch over them and do amazing things far than we, further than we could ever imagine with them in their lives, no matter what their circumstance is now. Um, with that said, let me ask if there's anybody uh, that has any announcements about any upcoming events that uh, we need to be aware of so that we might be able to participate in any upcoming uh, future events, any announcements tonight. Well, Pastor Man, I don't have no an announcement. It's announcement. It's not announcement. So well, I do want to tell everyone that we do have our uh, chair of our membership of the NAACP New Orleans branch. Uh, Mr. Frederick Barrett is on here tonight. So if you want to join, are you interested in anything about the NAACP in New Orleans, please put in the chat. Uh, your uh, contact information for Mr. Uh, Bell can contact you, and we really appreciate your support in joining the NAACP. That's number one. Number two is the NAACP do have a a resource uh, documents for uh, scholarships. So um, if you want the information about the scholarship of the uh, NAACP resource, please contact myself. Or you can contact uh, our president, Mr. Coleman, for our scholarship resource. And nevertheless, this is the last thing I have to say. I have to say this. It's a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. So we are asking everyone to keep moving forward and praying for our youth, lifting them up, giving them your grace, giving them your time and your money for they could keep on moving forward and being productive. And that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you, you Valerie. All, all right, right, Val. Yes, it, Val. Any other announcements? All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Let's just close in a word of prayer. Our lead us. Oh, God, we just lift up these young people to you. God, uh, we know that you can open up the storehouses of heaven and pour out a blessing. God, we know and acknowledge tonight that you can do exceedingly, abundantly more than we ever thought or even asked for. 
God, we pray that we might walk by faith and not by sight. So God, every dollar that is needed to get these young people to Las Vegas, God, we ask that you would uh, connect, God, that you would uh, lead, that you would prompt somebody in their heart that would get this message and say, I want to contribute uh, to this great work. And so God, use us to do that. Allow us, God, to be able to tell the story about what you're doing, God, to be able to come against uh, all the negativity that's being spoken, God. We pray for our young people, God, that you would allow them to achieve their destiny, God. And we come against um, any any more imprisonment, any more death, any more murder, any more homicide. We speak against it in the name of Jesus and ask, God, uh, that you would bring our, our young people to a new level, God, and, and help us to do it, to mentor them, to, to speak truth and speak uh, uh, encouragement into them every step of the way. We ask this in the name of Almighty God and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Good night, everyone. Have a good night, everyone. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. Bye -bye. Good night. Thank you so much. And Thank Be you nice. again. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.